Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another wonderful and delightful Toe Talk with Tojo featuring my wonderful co-host, Max Ranger, a.k.a. Whiskers. Max, what do you got to say for yourself today? I'm getting pretty sick of the Whiskers thing. I think I look pretty good. No, that Whiskers thing I introduced you once, we were at this big motorcycle rally, I'll say, and then I said, this is Whiskers, and then it just stopped. They just thought that was my nickname. Now your new name is Whiskers. Whiskers, how does it look so good? Oh, Death Grip. Death Grip Wax. My God. These products changed my mustache game. They did? I didn't even know I had a mustache game. And then I got this, and all of a sudden, there's that mustache game. I'm walking around, people are like, how do you look like that? How is it staying like that? How does this? I go swimming right now in the ocean, chased by a shark, come out on the beach. Perfect. It looks like airplane wings. I oh, love it. I love it. It's. I believe this is called the uh, English style. And I didn't actually use, like, this is death grip here, but today I used sudden death. And it is a nice, tacky, hard, I love it. Highly recommend? Oh, you know 10 what out I'm, of 10. You know when I'm out and about doing my daily chores and uh, doing my business, people come up to me and grab my beard and say, Joe, why is your beard so luxurious? And it's got such an excellent sheen to it. And I say, well, I use vintage beard products, vintage grooming products. And it works really well. What you do is you open up the package. There's something really cool inside. It's the elixir, if you will, famous elixir. You open it up, put it on your beard, do this, moisten it, groom it to where you like. And it smells delightful. I highly recommend vintage grooming beard products. Try some today. Anyways, let's get right into the show. You excited? No. We paid some bills. Are that you is, excited? That is called paying some bills. Thank you to these people for being a sponsor. We love you and we'll promote you until the day we're dead. That's right. I right. Your product placement a little bit better than that. There you go. Right arm. How about today? I'm going to go ahead and just yank these reins right from your hands. Hijacking the show. Yeah. I've got some questions for you. Go ahead. Um, you think we get a little bit personal today? I don't want to. You don't want to? No, I'm very... Uh, You're an prote- emotional guy. No, I'm protected about myself, and no. I don't like to show any weakness. You're very reserved. You know, the competition looks for any chink in my armor, and they try to use that against me to make me weak. But, but they- that that's never going to happen. No. Max, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Our, our producer brought up some great points there while we were off set, and uh, I thought maybe we could delve into that a little bit. I would. Uh, you've been here on this toe journey we'll call it for many years how many years big toe uh 23 years 23 years that's a long time jesus you look ancient thanks let me tell you thank you um i know you you started out towing's towing's been great to me i'm 20 (laughs) years old okay sorry go on i know you started out just by yourself yes i can't imagine how hectic that was yes um I'd like for you to tell me about that. Yes. I, I know we've de- we've gone into that before, but you didn't really explain. Yes. We'll say how it affected your, your life. First y- of all. Your life outside of towing. First of all, I like that you've taken over the host position because it is a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah. It's awful. And I hate it. You are the new host. Congratulations. You love it. And that's why I just let you run. Anyways, most people know that I was, uh, why am I speaking a million miles a minute? Uh, I was a mechanic when I first started, and I disliked working for bigger corporate garages. So I fell into towing by accident. A friend was a tow truck driver, took me out, fell in love with it. I think we all got here by accident. I I don't know one guy who's made it many years without it being some kind of weird story of how you ended up towing. Right. Yeah. So living in Mississauga, I said, I got to change my career. I'm depressed. I hate going into the shop every day and working, but I love driving. What can I do? So... It was always bothering me, and I fell into a bit of a depression because my life wasn't really going where I wanted it to go. You still care to hear? Yeah, of course I do. (laughs) So I was out one day eating dinner with somebody, and there was a napkin there, and the person was very boring. So I took a pen, and on this napkin, and I've still got the original napkin. Yes, I've told this story a million times, but it's true. So all you entrepreneurs out there, just get a napkin and write down your ideas because it friggin' works. And I drew a office... Very crudely, some seagulls flying overhead, a sun and clouds. Because you need, you need. I've seen this napkin. You need those things to be successful. And now I work in this office. And I've used this napkin in presentations. Like uh, there was one of the police forces was looking for an exclusive towing company. And I wore my suit and I gave a presentation. And out of my pocket, I pulled out. I this remember cr- that. So I pulled out this uh, crude drawing. Yeah. And it, it drew them in and they said, wow. This guy's an amazing artist. 
So I drew an office, a compound, one crappy tow truck, a guard dog, something. I had just had this idea and I wrote it down and I said, I'm going to own a towing company. I didn't have any money. Zero. When I say zero, I mean negative zero. So you got no money. How do you get money? So I asked my parents, uh, well, I moved down to Niagara Falls and I worked at several shops just to make a bit of money to pay the rent. Couldn't stand it. I said, yo, mom and pop. Um, you went at them with yo? Well, no. All right, then. I said, mama. <laughs> and then uh, I said, listen, I've got this idea. And they're always very supportive. I come from a Portuguese background. Family is everything. We support each other until the day we die. I'm 52 years old, and if I wanted to, I could still live in my mother's house. It's just how we do it. And she's judge, a wonderful lady. Judge me. I don't care. Um, so I asked them, can I borrow eight grand? I want to buy my first tow truck. $8,000 for a tow truck. Can you believe that? I absolutely cannot. So I, I, went to a, I went to Canadian Towing Equipment, shout out to Canadian Towing, and guys. bought my first tow truck for eight grand. It was an old Abrams truck, as everybody knows, and it served me well for like three years. It was my only truck. So you borrowed eight grand. You got your truck. You worked your ass off, evidently. How'd you get that money back to your parents? How long did that take you? Well, believe it or not, and mine is a bit of a... A tenacious story because I'm not scholastic at all. I didn't study business. I didn't study any kind of economics or how to run a business. Nothing. All I know is tenacity and working hard. Whatever. It sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but it's completely true. So the minute I got the truck, I know I had to pay my parents back. I was out there hustling. The minute my feet touched the ground, I was a shameless self promoter, meaning you could be the Pope walking by me and I'd be like, Yo, my name's Toe Joe. Here's a card. You break down, I'll take care of you. Whatever you need. And I got good feedback. And you know what it was? Was a lot of people said to me, oh, we're scared of tow truck drivers, but you speak so eloquently and you present yourself properly. Now, you have to remember, I did something completely innovative down here. I was the one of the first people to wear a full uniform, um, meaning I wanted to stand out from the towing companies that showed up with one um, snaggle tooth or <laughs> we can use some comedy yeah, absolutely. Or, or they weren't dressed appropriately or they had a lumber jacket and we could throw up a picture of, uh, I've, I've got some vintage pictures of you and you're kind of looking like a mechanic, no facial hair, clean baby face and just correct. Go get her. And I wanted to give, um, let's say Mr. Thomas that broke down his BMW. I wanted to give him a good experience. So he'd call me back anyways, my little thing worked where I presented myself as not your typical tow truck driver, but more of a businessman, and that really took off. Now, all of a sudden, my little tow line that I put out there starts ringing, 353-1717, super catchy. It starts ringing. I couldn't believe it how much my phone started ringing, and it was just not because I was doing the cheapest toes. We could talk about that another time. I did fall into that trap also. But because I was giving proper service, I always looked groomed, I looked well, and I spoke properly. I didn't go, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah, I'll tow your car. I was like, yes, absolutely, I understand. I'll take it to where you want it to go. And then the 8000 bucks I borrowed from my mom and father, I was able to pay them back within, they couldn't believe it because they didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about business. They probably thought they were just giving me eight grand, but I was able to pay them back within seven months. That's not bad. So whatever I would make, I would keep half and the other half I would I would pay them back. So it took me almost exactly seven months to pay back the loan for my parents for the first truck. And then you're off and running. Still solo, but I'm I'm off and running, but there. a lot of people don't know this story. They think, oh, it's regional towing. The phone's just going to ring. Employees here think, oh, I don't have to do that call. The phone's going to ring. Or they think regional towing just came out from smoke and opened up to this huge towing company. No, no. I suffered, and I suffered immensely. To be great, you're going to inflict some pain on yourself. To be an excellent person in whatever you do is not easy. And it's going to cause you some pain. I don't want to get too much into detail, but I can. I would if, like you to. If I would you, like to know all about it. If you shoot some questions at me, I'd be willing to answer them. So seven months, parents are paid back. Yes. That's unheard of. Yes. That's, that's real quick. Yes. Were you married at the time? I was. You were already married. Yes. 
How about little Dante? Was he already a product? I'm going to try not to tear up here. He was not a product. No, he was. Yes, he was born already. He was. Newborn he was, baby. He wasn't still baking. He was out. Already had his little fro growing about. Yeah, my son's got really curly hair. Oh, yeah, he's so and cute. He was born. But I've got a brand new business. It's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week business. It never shuts down. And, I mean, I was hustling. And it was going like crazy. Every toe I did, I didn't turn down one. So I don't imagine there was much time for Mrs. Joe and baby Joe because you're out there grinding, making sure this business doesn't fall. Yeah, it was complete shit. I didn't want to fail. I'm not a failure. Anybody that knows me, my tenacity's through the roof. And just driving in today, I was thinking, I would come home after a day of hectic towing with this brand new company and just me driving. And walking in the front door and my wife saying, just bombarding me with questions. Bah, 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 bah. They're going to be paid. Bah, 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 bah. I'm like, hey, give me a minute. I just took my shoes off. Let me get acclimatized, acclimatized to the atmosphere here. Let me calm down a minute. I was just dealing with crap all day. So that took a toll on my marriage. I don't imagine it got much better. How, no. Uh... So... It's a direct graph. If you could see the graph that I'm trying to portray here for everybody to see. As I got busier and made more money and the phone calls kept coming in, my marriage graph went down. Now, without getting into too much details, I ended up sleeping. And there's going to be so many other tow owners out there, maybe even operators that can relate to exactly what I'm saying. So money's coming up. I'm like, this is great. Marriage, suffering. I ended up, because the phone was ringing nonstop. I'm the driver and I'm the dispatcher. I'm sleeping in the spare room. My wife is sleeping in her own in the master bedroom. My son is in his baby's room sleeping. Because the phone ringing obviously is going to disturb people while they're sleeping. It was insane. It just about almost killed me. So we reach year three, still running completely alone. That's wild. Answering the phone, trying to tow... That's what, it's hilarious. People think regional towing just, boom, opened up. No, fuck's sakes. I, like, I suffered. There's a lot of suffering to become great. So I, I, suffered a, I suffered a great deal, answering the phones completely by myself and towing for three years. But you have to do it if you want to make it, unless you're wealthy and you could start a company from scratch with uh, lots of safety net. Buy I had, some trucks, get some employees, send them to work. I had zero safety net. So... Year three, I'm doing all this. I'm hyper. I'm eating really fast. I'm dealing with all these things. The phone never stopped ringing. I would literally lay down, Max. Oh, I just need like two hours to sleep. Bring. Hi, it's the police. We need you at intersection such and such. So can you hazard a guess as what I'm about to share now? I could hazard a guess, but I definitely want to hear it from uh, your own words. It was so hectic, so busy, me in one truck, answering the phones, doing accounting, doing everything. I say to my wife, listen, I know I haven't been around. And I know my son is really not seeing me. Why don't we go to the movies? We go to the movies. And I, I hate this memory. That's why I'm not going to share it. Come on. Just kidding. I hate this memory. So we're sitting in the movies. I've got my phone on vibrate. And I'm trying to watch the movie, trying to show my wife that I care. We're eating popcorn. Phone's vibrating. It's nonstop ringing. I'm like, hello, regional towing. How can I help you? Hi, it's the police calling. We're going to need you over here. Or hi, it's so-and-so auto club. We're going to need you over here. I'm in the freaking theater with my wife and I'm answering the phone. And I'm giving them long ETA so I could try to make it. Because the business can't fail. The business can't fail. I'm the sole breadwinner. This has to work. Joe Vieira doesn't fail. But you know what that did to me? All of a sudden, I'm looking at the theater Scream. It starts doing this to me. I'm looking around. Everything is shaking. My heart was beating out of my chest. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to see you. This is my time, isn't it? I grabbed my wife and she said, you're sweating and you look gray. Great. Thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> What happened was, I don't know if it was a panic attack. The doctors say that I was just overworked, overstimulated. But at that point, answering the calls in the theater, whispering, being secretive, trying to keep it all together, it just climaxed and made me have a nervous breakdown or too much or just overworked. 
but I was still relatively young at this point, so I thought I could handle it. Well, guess what? The towing life, doing it alone, catches up with you pretty fucking quick. Yeah. So how'd that end? Did you have a panic attack? Did somebody call an ambulance? Did your wife drive you home? So I ended up like, I remember stumbling out of the theater like I was drunk. And again, I don't like to show weakness, so I hope everybody appreciates what I'm showing here. But I'm telling you so you can do what I did and actually take some breaks. I remember stumbling out, out of the theater, people walking by me. Hey, watch it, buddy. And I'm like, hey, I'm coming through. And like, <laughs> like almost like I was drunk. Yeah. And I get out into the main hallway of the theater and I pass out and faint. Next thing I wake up and there's uh, firemen, uh, paramedics all around me. They got heart monitors. Uh, they check me out. They say everything's fine. They rush me to the hospital. Ho hospital gives me an amazing bill of health, said you're fine. They chalked it up to overworking. So essentially it's, it's more of a panic attack, right? The anxiety through the roof. You're not eating right. You're not sleeping right. You've got way too much going on. And the humans aren't meant for that. The brain. And that's, my, how, that's how you get shut down by your brain. It says, nope. We're done here. The brain just said to me, you know what? You're overdoing it. You're doing too much. And you have to remember, while I'm doing all this business, I've got A, B, and C company uh, trying to shut me down. Uh, one of their drivers pulling me over and, and uh, threatening me. You're not going to tow in this town. I'm like, oh, yeah, buddy, watch me. And all this is going on. They're driving by my house. All this crazy crap is happening. So after that episode at the movie theater, went to the family doctor. She checks all the charts. Joe, there's nothing wrong with you but you're going to have to start taking breaks. So I took her advice. She's a great doctor and she's right. I was way, way overworking, but I wanted to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I started taking breaks. So that's why you see me on Friday afternoons. I just vanish up until Monday morning and I'm gone. So you see your family doctor, clean bill of health. You take her advice, start taking breaks. Where's the wife in this? Is she encouraging? Is she helpful? Is she fed up what, what what is happening now so let me give you a quick scenario we used to i used to try to make up for it by taking her to dinners and one story in particular i took her to red lobster there was a lull in the calls no calls coming in took her to red lobster we're having a great time she looked wonderful i of course looked wonderful we're eating staff is great all of a sudden the phone rings but it was just mid mid um mid food mid eating Hi, it's the police. We need you for a car in the ditch over here. And I'm like, absolutely, I'll be right there. And I remember looking up at her and she gave me that face. She goes, you're going to go, aren't you? I said, well, yeah. And this story's heartbreaking. And I said, yes, I'm going to go, but don't worry. I'm going to be right back. It's super quick. It's just down the road. Are you ready? I came back three hours later. And I came back to her crying at the table. And I came back to the restaurant being closed. And I came back to the staff sitting with her. And this is in invoking some emotion out of me because that's the mother of my child. It came back to the staff sitting with her at the table consoling her and me walking in and playing it over in my mind as I can see it clearly right now saying, sweetie, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I thought it'd be quick. And she was just in tears, food pushed away. My food was cold. And I said, this will never happen again. I'm truly sorry. The marriage soon after that dissolved. That almost upset me. Because it is heartbreaking. Even though she had left me because I just wasn't around, I was too focused on being so great and not failing that I failed to see that my newborn son needed me and that my wife needed me. Still to this very day, I'm plagued by that restaurant story where I walked in and she was in tears and these strangers were consoling her and that drive home was pretty damn quiet longest drive ever so the marriage fell apart that that story kind of broke my heart here I'm keeping myself together um, obviously that was just the first three years and here we are 23 years later I've been here for seven almost eight years whatever it's been so the business didn't fail the business kept thriving which means you kept answering that phone. You kept hustling those calls. Did it keep affecting your personal life? Did it keep affecting relationships? Were you able to cultivate a new one? And you find anybody understanding? I don't care what anybody says. If you're in the tow life, you have to have a good support system. You have to good have to have a good solid partner that understands, hey, will you roll with me on this? 
it's not so much a job or a career. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, hundred percent, it is. It really is a lifestyle, isn't it? Uh, not everybody can make it doing it. Not everybody has the right systems in place to have that support at home to have this type of job. Um, obviously, your marriage ended. It's very unfortunate. Um, did you make adjustments after that? Did you change anything up to make it a little more work-life balance for yourself? Max, that's a very poignant question. And one thing I did do, sadly, I should have done it a lot sooner, is I hired my first employee. Because, you know, I was younger and I just wanted to do everything myself because I expected a certain level of excellence coming from my company, even though it was just me. I hired my first employee and he was a truck driver. And during the week, he drove big rig, delivered bananas to California, and he wanted a part-time gig, nights and weekends. And I'll tell you, Max, that little adjustment was enough for me to start spending time with my son and start spending more time with my girlfriend at the time. And it just allowed me to get back into the gym, allowed me to relax, and allowed me to have some basic work life, family life balance finally. Just that one adjustment of hiring a part-time employee took so much burden off of me. It's good to take that pressure off, right? Give you that, because that I, I understand that work-life balance, it, it's absolutely important. You can't you can't just do this all the time. Toe life is not easy. It's not, and it's not for everybody. Thank you. Amen to that. Yeah. Toe life certainly is not for everybody. Either you've got it or you don't. And as an owner, it'll run you ragged. Uh, I mean, we don't have to get into employee after employee, you know, alleviating more and more stress, because obviously that happened. So here we are today. Um, if you could go back, take some of it back and just go at it again, what are some adjustments you think you might have made or, I guess, advice you could give other people if they're starting out, what you would have done differently to prevent, obviously, the like catastrophic moment that happened to your marriage? If I could look back and make some adjustments to the previous mistakes that I've made, one of them would have been to actually focus not so much on making that dollar and focus more on my family, focus more on spending time with my son and not so much chasing that dollar, chasing all the toes. Because in the end, I don't care what anybody says. All the rotators, all the tow trucks you had, it means nothing. When you're sitting on that proverbial deathbed, as cliche as it sounds, the people around you is what's mattered. All the money I've amassed, the Corvette, the show, none of it matters. I want you. I want your wife next to me when I'm dead. That's what I want. Going back, what I would have done, got employees sooner to alleviate some of the stress and make my family work-life balance 100% better. That's deep, brother. Uh, I'm going to continue taking the reins and shut this down. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us today. I had a great time with my fabulous hosts, Joe Vieira. And uh, remind you guys to slow down, move over. It's very important to us. And uh, stay tuned for the next one.